Hey everyone, in today's video, we are talking all about the floss rule. Now, there's a few other names for this rule, and this is a spelling rule that you will want to teach your students. So in today's video, I'm going to go over what the floss rule really is, along with plenty of examples of words that you can use with your students when teaching this rule, as well as plenty of activities for you to do a whole group with your students, and a few activities that your students can use to practice this rule as well. Now, I also have a big freebie for you that I think you are going to enjoy. So if you are ready to see the ideas in this video, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Now, I don't know about you, but I actually never taught the floss rule explicitly to my students until I started using foundations in the classroom. Foundations, I believe, teaches this rule in first grade. Um, definitely not in kindergarten. I believe it is a first grade rule that you would want to teach your students. It's a great time for them to understand some of these spelling rules. But prior to 2017, that's when I first started using foundations, I had not actually taught this rule to my students explicitly. And of course, since then, I've been trained through IMSI, the Orton Gillingham method, as well as I also have my hand on the UFLI uh, Foundations book, which is the University of Florida Literacy Institute, and that is their phonics curriculum. And anyway, my point is in Foundations, in the MZ Orton Gillingham, as well as UFLI, the Foundations kit, they all teach this type of rule to first grade students. It's in their scope and sequence. So if you hadn't taught it previously, I hope this video and those recommendations would inspire you to teach this to your students. So I would love to know from you if you have taught this rule in the past, um, if you use foundations, maybe you teach it through there, if you have another curriculum that teaches this rule, but I would love to know if you normally teach this to your students. Let me know down in the comments. So now that we've all determined we should teach this spelling rule to our students, what is the floss rule? The floss rule is a spelling rule, so it's not going to help students decode words. Um, it's good for teaching them how to spell words. Uh, and again, we call it a spelling rule. Some people call it a spelling generalization because again, with rules, if we teach rules, sometimes it feels like that always must be the case, but we know there are many exceptions to different rules, especially when talking about phonics, both encoding and decoding. So this is a spelling generalization you will want to teach your students. We've seen it called the floss rule. Sometimes it is the floss rule, like this right here. And then I've also heard it called Sammy Loves Friendly Zebras, as well as Sammy Loves Fried Zebras, which that last one I believe is from Foundations. I don't love the fried zebras reference, but if you have heard this rule called something else too, let me know down in the comments. But those are some general names for this spelling rule. So like I mentioned, this is a spelling rule, so students will need to know when to apply this rule. And it's also known as a one, one, one rule, which means one syllable one short vowel and ends in one of the following consonant sounds f, l, s, or z, hence the floss. So if a word has all of those, one syllable, one short vowel, and ends in one of those four consonant sounds, then the last letter of that word is going to be doubled. And just so you can see some quick examples of this, for f we have cliff, stuff, off, Ending with our double L, we have bell, grill, cell. Ending in our S, we have boss, dress, floss. And ending in our Z, there are not too many of them, but we have buzz, jazz, and fuzz. That is not a comprehensive list. There are plenty of other words, but two things I want to mention about this spelling rule include, number one, again, you want to teach your students that this is a spelling rule. So when they see this word right here, cliff, it's mostly going to be important when we are spelling this word, because when we are sounding this out, we have k, l, i, f, and we're gonna know that that double F is just going to make the one F sound. We don't hear f, we don't hear F twice. That'll be pretty easy for your students to understand, but it's when we get to that spelling part that students are going to need to remember to double the F, because if they hear the word cliff, we tap it, k, l, i, f. I only hear the four sounds. If we took away one of the Fs from the word cliff, it would still say cliff if we sounded it out. So again, just to reiterate to your students that this is going to be most important when we are actually spelling or writing these types of words. The second thing I wanna mention about this rule is that some teachers and curriculums actually don't teach the Z as part of this, and that's for two reasons. Number one, there aren't that many occurrences where the double Z actually takes place. Um, there are a few, like I mentioned, jazz, buzz, 
um, fuzz. But also this can be tricky because of some of our exceptions. Remember that one, one, one rule. We said one syllable, one short vowel, and ends in one of these consonant sounds. F, l, s, or z. But now we think about some of these words. As, his, was. That is where it gets tricky because those words right there, they are heart words that we will teach our students, but they do follow that one, one, one rule, except that the z sound actually ends in an S and not a Z, so it's not going to be doubled. That S only doubles when it makes the S sound and is represented by the letter S, and that Z only doubles when it makes the Z sound and is represented by a Z. Whether you choose to include the Z in this category or not is up to you, um, but if you do, make sure you're also teaching those heart words so students know his, as, was. Those are going to be heart words and they do not apply to the spelling rule. All right, now that we know what the floss rule is so we can effectively teach it to our students, here are some of my favorite activities for teaching this skill. And just to reiterate before I jump into these activities, your first lesson is going to be to explicitly tell your students what this rule is, the fact that it's a spelling rule, basically everything I mentioned in the first part of this video, and decide what you want to call it with your students. Um, remember, we have the floss rule, where that has the F, L, and the double S already in it. We have floss rule, if you want to call it that, it just gives all four letters for your students. Um, you might want to call it Sammy Loves Friendly Zebras, whatever you decide, but make sure your first lesson is to explicitly teach what the rule is and give your students some examples. Now, once we've gone over that and I've taught the one, one, one rule so they know what to look for, this is where we start checking some words. So I like to go ahead and display somewhere on my board these three check marks right here, and I will tell students that I'm going to show them some words that don't have a double ending, and we're going to have to decide if that consonant at the end gets doubled. And I tell them that the way we're going to check this is by going through our check boxes here. We need to know, is this a one syllable word? Does it have one short vowel? And does it end in one of those ending sounds? So I'll probably draw something like this on the board and then I will simply display some words. Here we have tap and we go through each one. Is this a one syllable word? Yes, check. Does this word have one short vowel? Yes, check, it has the a. Ah. Does this sound end in f, l, s, or z? No, it does not. So when we spell the word tap, should we double the P? No, we should not. Here's another one. M ass, mass. Now mass sounds like a word to me, but when I'm spelling it, do I need to double that S? Let's check. Is it one syllable? Yes, check. Does it have one short vowel? Yes, it has that A, ah sound. Yes. Check, does it end in one of those four sounds? Yes, it does. So when we write the word mass, we need to double that S. And then if this was written on the board, or I would physically go ahead and write it on the card to show that this word gets doubled and they can see this word. And then we would go ahead and follow through that process with a few other words. Now you could choose to do like five to six words a day and kind of spread this out. You could also simply hold up the cards like I'm doing and we can walk through it. Buzz, yes, we need to double this one. And we can kind of give a thumbs up, a thumbs down. But if you are choosing to do this with the thumbs up, thumbs down and doing it whole group, um, you do wanna make sure your students aren't just saying yes or no, but they have to explain why or why not that ending consonant gets doubled based on our one, one, one rule. So again, you'll want them to kind of prove or disprove why it should or shouldn't be doubled. Also, instead of just talking through these, you could show each one and have students also write it on their whiteboards as we go. So that way, like when they had the word hop here, they would just write hop. We would determine that it didn't need to be doubled. Awesome, and then we can erase it. Now we write cuff. We go ahead and walk through our one, one, one rule, determine it does need to be doubled, and they can add that F. That way they go through that process. As you can see, I made sure to include some words that do apply to the floss rule as well as ones that don't, um, and for some different reasons as well. Another one I included was wheel, and I included this one because it is one syllable, and it does end with the L sound, but it does not have the short vowel sound. It has the E, it has a long vowel. Um, I think I also wrote in here the word chief for that same reason. So basically when doing this activity, you wanna be sure to include a few different words um, that go against some of the different rules so students can really determine if it applies or if it does not apply. 
All right, so that was activity number one, and I want to point out that because this is a spelling rule, most of the games and activities we are going to do with our students are going to have them practicing actually spelling or encoding these words. We want to get them used to the idea of actually writing and doubling that end consonant when necessary. To help with this, of course, some simple dictation is going to be great for your students. So I mentioned earlier in the video that I do have a freebie for you, and the freebie actually includes a few pages of example words. Um, or clip art rather, example images of words where the floss rule applies. So we have chess, dress, jazz, floss, shell, bell, buzz, hill, and kiss. And don't worry, of course, I do have a little key for you as a, cause sometimes you look at the words and you're like, I don't know what that is, or it could be like three different things, like buzz could easily be. But what I would do with my students with these simple cards is I would simply flip one over, I'd cut them out, and I would flip them over one at a time. I would teach the students what the word is, so I would say it aloud first, let's pretend we're doing chess. I would have students repeat, chess. They would go ahead, tap it out, ch eh, s. And then I would have them write the word either on their whiteboard or I would have them use letter magnets or letter tiles to actually create the word chess. Now these images all purposely have that double consonant at the end because that's what we are practicing. But if your students are confused and they don't double that letter, remind them, bring their attention back to that one, one, one rule. Let's check it. Let's see if it should have a double S on the end or a double whatever letter. So in the freebie, I have a bunch of these words. And like I said, I would cut them out. I would simply flip them over or display it under a doc cam. We would say the word aloud, tap it out, and then go ahead and write it or build it with letter magnets. Now, when students are dictating, we always want them to do words in isolation as well as words in a sentence. So here are a couple example sentences you could use with your students. Will Bill get a shell? And when doing dictation sentences, I always have students count the words. Will Bill get a shell? Five words. And then I go ahead and repeat it as many times as necessary for students to actually write the sentence down on their whiteboard before we check it. Now I like the sentence because it is a question, so I'm looking for a question mark at the end, and also the name Bill needs to be capitalized. Another sentence is, there was fuzz on the pill. Let's count it out. There was fuzz on the pill. Six words. Again, I repeat it over and over. Um, there are some high frequency words in this sentence, which I like, and we also have was, which is one of those kind of exceptions, one of those heart words you will have taught your students. Um, and then we have fuzz and we have pill, which follow that floss rule. Those were just two quick sentence examples, but of course you can just look at any of the words that are included in the freebie and think of a quick sentence using patterns and high frequency words that your students have already learned. But with dictation, remember words in isolation first and then sentences. Speaking of dictation, there is another activity that is great for you to do with your students, and that's going to be phoneme manipulation. So here students are again dictating different words, but they're going to manipulate some phonemes, specifically that ending phoneme, to then include words with double letters. This is what it would look like. So here I'd ask my students to write down the word pick. We can tap it out. P -i three sounds. Of course, I would expect my students to already know the CK digraph at the end of pick, and they will go ahead and write pick. Of course, instead of writing, they can always do this with letter magnets. That's going to be up to you. But once they've written down pick, I will tell them to change k to l, pill, p, i, l. Again, they can tap it out, p, i, l, and they'll change that CK to the double L, pill. Other examples of this include write bet, change t to l, b, l, bell, write box, change x to s, box to boss, write flop, change p to s, flop to floss, and write hug, change g to f, changes hug into huff. So there you can see students are still dictating words, but instead they're taking it one step further by using phoneme manipulation to change one word into another word. And of course, all those words are going to have that double consonant at the end. And last but not least, I have a fun game that your students can play either independently or with a partner to again help them review and practice this skill. This game is called Spin, Say, and Spell, and I actually have an entire unit 
filled with tons of these games for lots of phonics skills. It looks like this over on TPT, and it is called Spin Say Spell because those are essentially the steps students will take. It is divided into phonic skill, so you of course would only pick what students are working on. They will spin the spinner, say the word aloud, and then practice encoding it over in the boxes on the right. Now in that unit, I originally did not have a few sheets for students to practice this floss rule. So I went ahead and added this game, Spin Say Spell, for the floss rule, not only to that unit, but I also added it to the freebie that you can grab in this video. Let me show you how to play this. All right, Spin Say Spell is as easy as it sounds. Like I said, there are three directions here. I included some images for students just to remind them. They spin, they say, and they spell. Now all of the images that will apply to the floss rule are going to be the same as the ones on the cards in this freebie. So we have spill, cuff, dress, and jazz. Um, that way students will have seen them before so they should know what it is. And then I do include a couple that do not apply to the floss rule. I like to do this as a way not to trick students but to make sure that they are really understanding when we apply this rule and when we don't. So on this sheet we have dog and we also have can. So I like to use these little clear spinners here, but students can also simply use a paper clip and pencil. They will spin, here they land on the line, we'll go up to spill. They'll say it aloud, spill, and then they go ahead and write it. Sp -i. And then this does our double L, spill. And then they go again. Now students, jazz. They can do this with a partner, so they can go back and forth, um, or they can do it on their own, so that's really up to you. I also like these boards because you could easily laminate them or put them in dry erase protecting sheets, and they can use a dry erase or wet erase marker to play this game. That way it could be used over and over as well. But essentially students spin, say, and spell until they fill up the board, and they are all done. So there you can see Spin Say Spell is a simple but effective game for having students encode different words. Now, like I said before, I included that game. I have a few different versions of it with different words, as well as those floss picture cards in a big floss freebie that I have for you. That is listed down in the description below, so make sure you check on it. And if you're looking for more of those Spin Say Spell sheets for other phonics patterns, I have also listed those in the description as well. So I hope this video really helped you understand what the floss rule is and I hope that it gave you a bunch of good and effective activities for you to use with your students when teaching this rule. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Any questions or comments, let me know down below in the comment section. I always read all of the comments, and if you have a question, I try to answer it as quickly as I can. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.